before we get to the video, this one is based on a video request by Siphon K, one of the channel's viewers. Admittedly, I did take my damn time with it, since I did make a lot of chart work and labbing beforehand. Anyways, let's begin. The game Gundam Assault Survive is a 2010 PSP game, known for many things, especially the roster size, which is around 311 units strong, even dwarfing the rosters of the later entries, such as Gundam Seed Battle Destiny's 120 unit roster and the smaller lineup of Gundam the 3D Battle for Nintendo 3DS. Now, a long time ago, people requested me to cover the 0079 era mobile suits from the game's roster, but that's still about 104 mobile suits, so I suppose I'll meet you halfway, covering the 0079 Federation roster and touching the Xeon side later in order to get the video out in a somewhat reasonable time frame. By the way, the mobile suits will be covered in the order they are shown in the game's menu. As a quick aside, the unit's rank is somewhat similar to GBO2's cost stat, where the more high-end units have a higher rank and this stat can be used to divide the game's roster or limit versus mode matches to a specific range of unit ranks. That being said, let's get to it. We start off pretty strong with the good old RX-78-2 Gundam, the OG. In this game, it's a great B-rank all-rounder. It carries five weapons, the beam rifle, the hyper bazooka, and the super napalm in the primary slot, as well as the 60mm head Vulcans as a secondary weapon. It has a beam saber for melee attacks, a shield, and unlike in Gundam Battle Universe, it also features a transformed mode where the Gundam equips the G-parts in order to fly around. Its super attack is a powerful beam saber slash that can take out a few targets at once. You can get this one from the shop for 98,000 after you unlock it by either playing with the prototype Gundam once or using the gun cannon and gun tank 5 times. Next up is the prototype Gundam. Think of it as a low-end version of the Gundam, at least stats-wise. This one is a C rank and has a similar loadout to the Gundam, minus the G-parts and the napalm. However, it does have a very nice melee weapon. The Gundam Hammer! It's a heavy yet fear-inducing weapon, since the front dash melee attack that it does can reach even further than the Ego Guy's heat rods. As for the super attack, it also involves the use of Gundam Hammer. The weapon gets much bigger in size and you'll go full on SD Gundam scad hammers on your enemy. The prototype Gundam can be bought for 80,000, becoming available in the shop right after you clear the Jabro stage on the Earth Federation side. If you want some more Gundam from your Gundam, there's the magnetic coding version for the RX-78 too, and it does come with the same loadout it had in the anime which means double hyper bazookas, a beam rifle and two beam sabers instead of one. The Vulcans stay roughly the same and the magnetic coating version's super attack is a ranged attack where the Gundam in question dual wields the hyper bazookas and rapid fires its Vulcans alongside a rocket barrage. It can be yours for the low low price of 110,000 after completing its research plan. This one is a B rank. On the note of Gundams with magnetic coating, the G3 is here too. This unit is an A-rank mobile suit, just like the full armor Gundam and the Alex. It has the standard beam rifle and the bazooka of the standard Gundam as primaries. Vulcans as secondary and a shield. Its melee weapon is the beam javelin, offering wide sweeps during its melee combos and the devastating javelin throw that is the G3 super attack. It can be unlocked in the shop by owning more than 5 Federation mobile suits and using the magnetic coating version of the Gundam 10 times. G3's price is 120,000. The next 3 Gundams are from games, specifically the Encounters in Space and Zionic Front, with all 3 units being B ranks. Both the GO4 and GO5 are shown in their BST configurations, by the way, and can only sort in space. Gundam Unit 4 is one of the two units in this game that are originated from space to the end of the Flash side story. This is the blue one, the long-ranged one to be exact. It does share the G5's beam rifle and the hyper bazooka, 
but its third primary weapon is the signature Mega Beam Launcher. It also has the usual Vulcans as a secondary. Beam Saber as melee and a shield. The only weapon that the game doesn't feature is the G-Force Beam Spot Gun. The super attack of the GO4 involves firing the Mega Beam Launcher at the max output. Though, unlike the original story, it doesn't end up mortally injuring the unit's pilot. As for the Gundam Unit 5, the red one has a very similar loadout, but unlike Luz Castle's G4, this unit carries a giant Gatling gun, which can be fired when stationary and for some reason has a hefty amount of recoil. To achieve a higher degree of Daka, the super attack is just the thing you want. It lets you fire a long barrage from the Gatling, shredding the enemies apart. And yes, just like the magnetic coating Gundam, the G04 can switch targets during this attack. Both the G4 and the G5 can be bought for 100,000 each from the shop. After having used the magnetic coating Gundam 5 times and completing the Operation Star 1 on the Federation side. That's the Abawaku one, by the way. Now, the Unit 6. The Madrock is one of the few Federation mobile suits capable of hovering. The game features its completed iteration, and for some reason, Gundam Assault Survive doesn't let you take it to space. The Madrock's primary weapons are the beam rifle and the pair of 300mm cannons on its back, which fire actual cannon shells as opposed to beams. Its secondary are the head Vulcans, of course, but unfortunately the loadout doesn't feature its grenade launchers. The shield's gone too, but at the very least the beam saber is at least somewhat half decent. The super attack is almost identical to the one gun cannon uses, rapid firing both the beam rifle and its cannons. The mudrock can be unlocked via the research plants and bought for 99,000 from the shop. There's also some limited production ground only models such as Gundam Ground Type, the GM Head and the Easy 8 from the OAF MS team. The Gundam Ground Type is a C-rank which carries around the 100mm machine gun, the 6-shot missile launcher and the 180mm cannon. I do not know where it stores all that, but it is nice that even without the weapons rack backpack it has a hefty lineup of primary weapons. Its secondary weapon is the multi-launcher within its chest, firing flares to momentarily blind and stun the enemy, which is a neat callback to both the original show and the ground type's Lost War Chronicles counterpart. It waves a beam saber around as its melee and it rapid fires the 180mm cannon during its super attack. The ground Gundam is available after using the GM ground type 5 times or clearing the Rambo roll stage on the Federation side and it comes with the price tag of 48,000 in the shop. GM Head is basically Karen Joshua's Gundam ground type from episode 10 where the head taken by an egg guy attack got replaced with a GM ground type head. It has slightly lower specs than the base Gundam ground type but it still resides within the C rank. However, Unlike the regular ground type, the usual 180mm cannon got replaced with the 380mm rocket launcher and the multi-launcher in the chest fires live ammo instead of flares. Its super attack is also different, with the GM head dual wielding the machine gun and the missile launcher, firing both alongside bursts from its multi-launcher. After completing its research plan you can get it for 45,000 from the same shop as everything else. As for the EZ-8, it comes with almost everything it should. It is a B-rank mobile suit whose primary weapons are the standard beam rifle of the Gundam ground type, a rocket launcher and the 180mm cannon. A combination of the head Vulcans and the chest mounted 50 caliber machine gun takes the slot for the secondary weapon and while you don't get to rip out your arm and bludgeon your enemies to death, the beam saber is still good enough. I'd say the super attack is the highlight of its whole moveset since it makes you rapid fire all your weapons except for the cannon. It comes at 62,000 and becomes available in the shop once you sort it with Shiro Amada and the Gundam ground type 5 times. The RX-78 and T1 Alex is there too, listed as an A rank. Its primary weapons are the beam rifle and the 90mm Gatling gun mounted on the arms. 
The latter doesn't fire from both at a time, it shoots from the arm closest to the target instead. Vulcans and the beam sabers, being the secondary weapon and melee, are more or less a given, and the super attack lets you shoot both of your arm gatlings at once, as well as the Vulcans. Once you get the research plan for it complete, you can get it in the shop for 116,000. Full Armor Gundam is a somewhat barebones A rank mobile suit. Your primaries are the twin beam rifle and the missile bay. The latter of which can fire missiles at full auto, though it does force you to stay still as you do so. Your secondary weapon is the full armor Gundam's cannon, allowing you to keep shelling the enemy as your other weapons reload. The melee side of things isn't too shabby either, since the full armor Gundam can just outright beat the enemy machines to a pulp with its bare hands. As expected, the super attack makes it fire all of its weapons. I probably didn't even have to mention that. This fun piece of machinery can be yours for about 115,000 after you obtain the reinforced armor part, clear the Operation Star one on the Federation side and use the magnetic coating Gundam five times. Alright, now for some C ranks. The gun cannon in this game is probably the closest you can get to your Kai Shiden power fantasies, if you don't count the EX versus iteration of the unit. Just like with the Madrock, the beam rifle and the cannons are in the primary slot, though additionally you also get the spray missile launchers for it. The gun cannon's secondary weapon is the fire nut grenade off of the gun cannon too. That's right, you get the incendiaries. Napalm sticks to Zeke's. On top of that, this unit is capable of fighting up close barehanded. This unit's super attack is the usual cannon and beam rifle barrage. You can get one from the shop for 56,000 after having finished the Jabro stage on the Federation side or use the gun tank twice. There's two mass production counterparts to the gun cannon, the one from the WAD OVA and the one from the Dreamcast game. The former is the standard RX-77D carrying the 19mm ballpup machine gun. It has the Vulcans in the secondary slots and the cannons are assigned to the second primary slot. They flip out when firing, which I find neat. Just like the standard gun cannon, it is capable of fisticuffs. Its super attack is somewhat similar to the gun cannon's barrage, though the beam rifle has been replaced with the machine gun. The mass production gun cannon shows up in the shop if you use the standard gun cannon five times or clear the war in the pocket stage on the Federation side. It costs 54,000. As for the latter, the other mass production gun cannon comes in white dingo colors. This one's packing a pair of 90mm bullpup machine guns, as opposed to the usual 100mm machine gun duo you'd see in Rise from the Ashes, GBO2 and even side stories. It can also melee attack, unlike in the Dreamcast game. Nonetheless, this unit has a feature that, in my opinion, does make it more fun to play than the standard mass production gun cannon. That's right, it has the cannons in the secondary weapon slot, removing the usual need to switch between the machine gun and the cannons. What also helps is that the cannon gets extra ammo. The mass production gun cannon White Dingo's super attack makes it fire a pair of highly explosive warheads from the cannons whose damage and explosion radius are somewhat similar to CCA MSV version of Stark Jagan's anti-ship missiles. To get this one, complete its research plan and you should be able to buy it from the shop for around 66,000 or so. With the gun cannon and the Gundam covered, there is but one mobile suit from the white base trio left, the gun tank. This is a d rank mobile suit, likely due to its underwhelming mobility, but that being said, its primary weapon, the cannons, and its secondary bot missiles are still decent weapons, with the latter letting you somewhat drift, kinda like the Magella Assault Tanks machine gun, but to a much lesser degree. Funnily enough, this thing is fully compatible with subflight systems, so putting it on a Dodai, a Skure, or a Mega Rider is never a bad idea. Its melee, if you can even call it that, has a very short range and consists of ramming and flailing around. As expected, a ranged barrage is the gun tank's designated super attack. It can be obtained from the shop for the low low price of 40,000 
and it will show up there once you either buy a GM ground type or complete the Rambo roll stage on the Federation side. Going back to units that were added from games, the Blue Destiny trilogy has its units here too, four of them in fact. The Earth Federation 0079 part of the roster has two of Yu Kajima's units, well three if you count the GM command but that isn't a game original unit. Anyways, the Blue Destiny Unit 1 is a fairly decent C rank unit and with the exception of head and chest Vulcans it does come with most things it should have come with. The primary ranged weapons of the Unit 1 are the standard 100mm machine gun, the ground type Gundam's beam rifle and of course the chest mounted missile launchers. As a bit of a callback to the original game's iteration of the GM command, the Blue Destiny Unit 1 has its hand grenades in the secondary slot. While this unit has a beam saber, its melee combos also involve a few slide kicks and shield hits as well. Now for the super attack. It is obviously the exam system. Upon activation it deals heavy damage in a small radius as the system activates, increasing the machine's speed, damage and thruster performance. This buff lasts until the mobile suit's SP gauge depletes or when the map changes. This one can be unlocked by using the ground type GM and the ground type Gundam 5 times each, becoming available in the shop for 56,000 shortly afterwards. The Blue Destiny Unit 3 is a B rank unit. It may lack the BD1's grenades and the machine gun, but at the same time you do get slightly larger ammo pools and as a secondary you get the chest Vulcans. Just like the Unit 1, it has a beam saber for melee and the exam system is conveniently slotted into the role of the Unit 3 special attack. The Unit 3 is unlocked by using the Unit 1 5 times and clearing the Operation Star 1 on the Federation side. Once unlocked, the unit comes with the price tag of 73,000 in the shop. Right under that you get the D rank that is the RGM79GM. The box standard federation model that you get as a freebie from the very start of the game. It has the beam spray gun and the hyper bazooka in the primary slots with the head Vulcans residing in the secondary slot. The beam saber is your melee weapon and you're given a shield tackle for the super attack. Just like the mass production gun cannon, the gem also comes in white dingo flavor, featuring extra weapons and better stats while at the same time sharing the GM's D rank category. Unlike the standard GM, the Hyper Bazooka in its primary slot is replaced with the GM ground types rocket launcher and you get one more primary weapon, the 100mm machine gun. Aside from that, its kit is more or less the same, including the shield bash super attack. Since the original Dreamcast iteration of the unit had the choice between the standard GM shield and the one from GM ground type, most games go with either of the two. In the case of Gundam Assault Survive, you get the somewhat less frequently featured GM shield. It can be yours for 35,000 once you complete its research plan. Another GM in the lineup is the GM ground type, an early game unit with a unique weapon. But first, a quick overview. The GM Ground is a ground only unit which can be bought from the shop for 35,300 after having finished the very first 0079 stage on the Federation side. It sports a small shield and shares the shield tackle super attack with the GM. As for its weapons, you get three primaries, the machine gun, a missile launcher and a rocket launcher. Your secondary weapon is a net gun that stops enemies in place or suspends them in midair should their feet be off the ground when you hit them. The trapped enemies are temporarily prevented from performing certain actions, letting them only use their primary weapon and nothing else. As you might have guessed, it's a D rank. Moving on, the next GM is a space only D rank unit, the GM Early Type from the OAF MS Team OVA and as some could argue, one of the few video game iterations of the unit. The loadout of this one is a carbon copy of Jim Kai's arsenal, bullpup MG, the hyper bazooka Kai, head Vulcans and the trusty beam saber. 
However, it does have an interesting super attack. On top of a machine gun barrage, the GM early type also conjures a cloud of ball K types firing at the enemy. That sure is a lot of balls. It can be yours for 37,500 after purchasing the GM ground type or using the GM three times. Staying on the note of GMs from OVA titles, the next four are from WAD War in the Pocket. The GM called the Strix type, GM Command, GM Command Space, and last but not least, the GM Sniper 2. All of them, except for the GM Sniper 2, are D ranks. The GM Sniper 2 is a B rank unit. The GM called District type is a ground only unit using the 90mm GM machine gun. The one with the magazine sticking out the side and the grenade launcher right underneath the barrel. Yes, you can use that one too. The head Vulcans and the beam saber are in their respective secondary and melee slots. While the super attack of the Cold District type is a single handed beam saber spin, which sort of reminds me of that one Gundam F91 scene. To get this mobile suit, which by the way costs 38,000, you get a clear Operation Star 1 on the Federation side or use the GM command three times. Speaking of the GM command, at least its ground only GM command version, this one shares the machine gun, head Vulcans, the grenade launcher and the beam saber with the GM call districts. But uh, this one comes with smoke rounds for the launcher as well. By the way, that one is in the third primary weapon slot. And like the Jim Call Districts, the Jim Command Super Attack is actually a machine gun and head Vulcan's barrage. The unit also covers itself with the shield, but since this is not Gundam Battle Tactics anymore, the iframes during the attack make the shield cover a little redundant in terms of utility. It costs 39,200 in the shop and can be unlocked by beating the Jabro stage on the Federation side or using the GM early type three times. The GM Command Space Type is, as the name implies, a space only variant of the GM Command. It comes with the standard GM Command beam gun and the 19mm bullpup machine gun that you might have seen with units like the GM Kai and the mass production gun cannon. It has the same super attack as the standard GM Command, but instead of the machine gun, you'll be rapid firing from the beam gun. This one costs 39,200, just like the base GM command, and can be unlocked using the GM command 5 times. GM Sniper 2 is basically a one-trick pony unit that specializes in sniping. It's a B-rank sniper unit with a beam sniper rifle. That's the model used in the OFMS team and Rise from the Ashes, if you're wondering, which comes with 5 shots, leaving the secondary slot to a 60mm head mounted Vulcan pod and keeping the beam saber in its usual melee slot. The sniper rifle by the way does lack the automatic aim offset of the conventional weapons letting you aim manually. This is a gimmick that sniper rifles and other weapons like the F91's beam launcher share. I thought I'd bring it up just in case someone doesn't know already. Moving on, the super attack of the gym sniper is one of the game's many death star beams coming out of the sniper rifle's barrel. It can be acquired for 78,500 from the shop once you get the research plan for it completed. If you want the Gem Sniper 2 but in white, the White Dingo Gem Sniper 2 is there for you. It's a B rank, just like the regular Gem Sniper 2. It has more mid-ranged options in the form of a 100mm machine gun and a rocket launcher. It also has smaller ammo pool for a sniper beam rifle and sports a different shaped shield. The secondary weapon, as well as the melee weapons, are retained from its base model. Just like the GM Sniper, it is unlocked by the research plan mechanic as well, and comes at the cost of 81,000. The last two GMs in the Federation's 0079 lineup are the GM Cannon and the GM Cannon White Dingo, both being D ranks. The GM Cannon is basically a low budget equivalent of the White Dingo mass production gun cannon. It has exactly half the firepower. One bullpup machine gun in the primary slot, one cannon as the secondary weapon, and lastly, the barehanded melee is there as well. The super attack of the GM Cannon is a cannon barrage. It costs 47,500 in the shop 
and can be unlocked through the research plans. Jim Cannon's White Dingo counterpart has quite an interesting loadout. It has the Jim Ground Types shield, the Jim Cannon's barehanded melee, the GM's beam spray gun and the hyper bazooka as primary weapons and the standard head Vulcans as a secondary. Just like the Jim White Dingo, it simply comes with slightly better stats and a larger arsenal. It's another unit unlockable by doing the research plan for it and can be bought for 49,000 from the shop. And yes, before you ask, this one also has a ranged barrage, though it uses some of its other weapons aside from the cannon. Though obviously the cannon is involved there as well. Next up are three balls. All three of them being D ranks. They have some fun gimmicks, but their stats are too pitiful to justify using these units for the most part. Each and every one of these balls is fully compatible with the subflight systems, by the way. The original RB-79 ball comes with its usual cannon and a pair of claw hands for melee. Its secondary weapon lets you call in more balls to help you out. The super attack pops out a cloud of balls that fire at the enemy. This unit can be bought from the start for 19,500. Awave MS Team's ball K-Type is there too. It has the double-barreled automatic cannon on the top, like in the anime, the claw hands of the standard ball, and of course the winch, that lets you tether an enemy and keep it from getting out of your reach. The tether disappears once you switch targets, a certain amount of time passes, or you tap the secondary weapon button again. Just like the standard ball, the super attack calls some more balls in, though this time around it's the orange ones. Should you beat the OF MS Team stage and own the standard ball, you can get this one for 20,000. The third ball is from MS Igloo's Ohio Platoon, sporting a shark face. While it does share the standard ball cannon and tiny claw hands, your secondary attack can stun any unit that's locked onto you, through the sheer power of intimidation. The shark face ball's super attack is a melee focused one where the ball hops around waving its arms and dealing damage. It can be bought for 21,000 from the shop once you complete its research plan. In case you haven't had enough low end d rank choke units, there's the Type 61 tank. It has high explosive and incendiary cannon shells as its primary weapon, smoke discharger in the secondary slot and very questionable looking melee attacks. Its super attack is just a plain cannon barrage. The tank is available from the start for 17,000 in the shop. The game also features the G-Bull, which is capable of transforming into the G-Armor. Please don't ask me how, I do not have a slightest clue. This one is a C-Rank, which has a pair of Mega Particle Cannons on the top, two beam rifles in each of the Gundam torso's hands, which serve as G-Bull secondary, and of course a very goofy melee pattern. The G Bull's super attack makes it quickly turn into the G armor and ram through enemies. This monstrosity can be unlocked by using the Gundam 5 times or using the Type 61 tank 3 times, after which you can get it from the shop for 56,000. Alright, that's all of the 0079 era Federation suits. At least within the game's 0079 tab. In the Extra Mobile Suits tab, you can also find the last shooting version of the RX-78-2 Gundam. Speaking of that one, it lacks a head, a shield, one arm and any weapons past a beam rifle and a beam saber. The secondary weapon is occupied by a button that lets you spam Amro Ray quotes in the enemy's general direction. Where the headless Gundam truly shines is its super attack which makes it fire a few shots upwards, raining beams down on the enemies shortly afterwards. It can be unlocked by completing its research plan, and for some reason it happens to cost 120,000 in the shop. Ok, now that should be all the Fetty units from that era. Here's a chart for the research plan, in case you need it. With all that done, I shall be taking my leave here. Should you enjoy this video, feel free to let me know. And if you want me to cover something pertaining to Gundam or Gundam video games, feel free to leave a comment under one of my videos or on the Bird app, and should I be able to do so, I'll cover it eventually. Shirtlad, signing out.